Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to go over some different types of stitches you can get in Ink Stitch. So let's get to it. So there's a lot of different types of stitches and it might get confusing how many they are and why you would use them. So that's kind of what we're going to do in today's video. So why would you want to change out what type of stitches you'd use? Well, there are many different types of stitches that you can get for different kind of looks that you want in your design. The two basic types of stitches that you can find in Inkscape pretty easily is a stroke and a fill stitch. And we'll be kind of talking about how you can get some different results using those two settings in params to get the different types of stitches that you may want. So stitches just will give you some more diversity in your design, maybe highlight the important parts of it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the information in this video, we have research from Ink Stitch's website. So we'll go ahead and put a link to their website in the description. Yeah, it really is a great resource. Mm -hmm. So we're in Inkscape and the first type of stitch we'll talk about is a stroke and under stroke, we'll talk about a running stitch. All right, so I'm just gonna go to my Bezier tool. Make a simple little line here and I'll hit control to keep that straight and enter. And you can see it's a solid line right now, but to make a running stitch, it actually needs to be a dashed line. So it doesn't matter which dashed line you pick. Mm -hmm. um, it just needs to be a dashed line. So your machine will know that it just needs to make one straight continuous line or running stitch. So we'll just leave that there right there. And again, it doesn't matter how thick this is, it's gonna be a single line of stitching right there. So we should probably view this in params. All right, so let's do that. So in params, um, you don't really have to change anything. Just make sure your running stitch along pass is enabled. Right, and that's this check mark right here. Mm -hmm. And what this, does is just like you see here, it's gonna make it a nice continuous straight line. Now this can be very useful in different shapes uh, for applique projects. Yeah, like so, the one under, once you have a fabric on, you can stitch it out. Yeah, right, so this also, if you were going to put a layer of fabric on top of a hoop with the stabilizer that's hooped, but just the fabric is on top, this is a good way to kind of stitch out the outer shape of whatever your project is so you don't have to hoop um, the fabric as well. If you're like you're working from a quilt or a big thick towel or something like mm -hmm. that, this can just kind of lock it down in place uh, with whatever shape that you want and then you can embroider your project on top of that now that it's nice mm -hmm. and locked in. And it probably goes around curves pretty well. It does, right? You know, so it'll follow uh, whatever mm -hmm. shape that you want. You just have to make that shape and turn the stroke into a dashed line which will make it a running stitch. So what's the next stitch we're gonna talk about? So the next stitch is kind of like this. Uh, it's a bean stitch. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is it has two lines of thread that go into the same area uh, so that it kind of, if you look at it real closely, it kind of looks like a little like coffee bean or something. Uh, basically makes for a thicker looked line. So you can use this for uh, really detailed areas of an embroidery project. Um, that just kind of like gives mm -hmm. some some additional detail on very small um, areas. But it's a bean stitch, pretty easy. Again, we're going to just make another lining with our Bezier tool. And this also needs to be a dashed line. So we'll keep it a dashed line. Uh, and we also have to make sure that we update our params for this one. So we're gonna go back into params and you can see right now it's just a running stitch mm -hmm. as is, but we can turn it into a bean stitch by identifying right here, bean stitch number repeats, and we can repeat it once, twice, or whatever. And you can see it will basically double up those stitch points. And we'll leave it just like that, applying quick. So the next stitch we're going to talk about is a manual stitch. And basically what a manual stitch is, is it takes each node point you make, and then it stitches that out as a needle point. Right, so this is where you can very specifically identify in a project exactly where each point of the stitch will go into your embroidery project. So if you wanted a part of your project to have a really long piece of thread on top, you can, adjust, you can do that here and you can identify exactly where the needle will 
poke into your embroidery project and where it will leave the thread on the outside of your project. This probably would be good for like line art. Yeah, absolutely. So to do that, again, you just need to make a user Bezier tool to make whatever line you want. You can see right here, I'm just going to click a point right here. So this will be the first stitch point. And I'm just going to make this one like, a, I'm just going to make three um, stitch points here, just so you can see that it's going to be one long line across the top, right to the middle, and then another line right over here. And just refine, I'll make it go down like that. So you can see that right there, it's just going to stick. I'm going to turn the fill off. And you can see just like that, it's going to just stitch in the places where I put those nodes. And you can better see it if we go to the node tool here. You can see there's a new stitch point right there, 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 and there. And that's it. Everything else, the thread is going to lay on top of our project. For this, it doesn't matter if it's a dashed line or if it's a straight um, or continuous line. How to get a running stitch is based in params. So we'll need to go to params and make that adjustment. Right. And you can see right here, it looked like it was a bean or a running stitch as it is. Um, but what we're going to do is instead of making it just a running stitch, we're going to make it a manual stitch placement and we're going to click this box. So now you can see the stitch points is just where we have them. Hit apply and quit. So the next stitch we're going to talk about is a zigzag stitch. So this kind of looks like a satin stitch, but it doesn't do as well around corners, but right. it is easier to make. Yeah, so a zigzag stitch is essentially a stroke. If you left a project with a stroke instead of converting it to a satin stitch, that's what a zigzag stitch is. And you can make some adjustments to get the zigzag look that you want with your project. So we'll talk about that. We, we are just going to use the Bezier tool to make a line, uh, but uh, again, this could be any stroke that would come off of any shape that you would make in Inkscape. So we're just going to use our Bezier tool. And this one is, we are actually going to make a straight line, a continuous line. So we're going to take away the dashes and we'll leave it 0.25 and we're we can show you how you can make those adjustments in params here. So you can see in your stroke settings, this is a zigzag stitch. It's just very like close together, but you mm -hmm. can change the spacing. So if you didn't, if you wanted it to be more looking like a zigzag, you just change your setting here and you can see that it spreads it out. I think it just like give you a cool look for whatever you need it for. Yeah, so some projects, it may be nicer to have this kind of look to uh, your stroke area. And again, you can do this with any stroke and just update your zigzag spacing for that particular look. So the next type of stitch we'll be talking about is satin stitches. And the first one within that is just a satin column. And we'll show you how to make that. Yeah, and we've showed in the past how to make a custom satin column, but you can use the Inkscape and Ink Stitch process to convert a stroke, which is a zigzag stitch, into a satin column pretty easily. And the ben what are the benefits of using a satin stitch over a zigzag stitch? So um, it does better with um, corners. If you need like a specific shape that has corners, it will just do a little bit better on that. Yeah, we have some projects yeah. that don't have very good corners because we didn't convert it to a satin line. And then this can also be used for text, and I think it does a little bit better of a job on text when you use a lettering GUI. So to compare, I think it would be good if we make a stroke with a corner, and then we can do a satin on top of that. So. This one we're gonna leave as a stroke, just as it is, but we're, we're gonna like kind of close in the zigzag um, a little bit. So go into our params. Oh, and it went back to default, so that's good. And you can see right here, this is what we're talking about with the corner. That does not look good. And you're gonna have overlap here in this part. And this is what you get with a normal stroke on any shape uh, other than a circle, which we've showed in the past. Um, 
but any kind of rectangle that you make or any kind of corner, you're going to get this issue. And this is without any added settings. Like, I think you can add some settings that might make this look a little bit better, but this is just how it is. Yeah. So instead, we're going to leave this here just to compare. We're going to hit apply and quit. And we're going to do another one. We're just going to copy this. And C, and B, put this in the right spot. This one here, we're going to convert into a satin line. And to do that, we're just going to make sure we select on it. In stitch, satin tools, and then we're going to convert line to satin. You can also make railroad tracks. Another way to make satin columns is like making railroad tracks, which we've talked about in other videos. Right, and we've done that. And those are called custom satin lines or satin stitches. But this one right here is really easy, and you can see that it has changed this into those railroad tracks that ink stitch understands. And when we look at this in params, we're going to see the difference. So you can see right here in the corner how much differently that stitched out. Mm -hmm. And it actually reached all the way out to the corner that we want. And this gives a much better result, especially when you're talking about uh, lines with a slight radius on there. That looks really good with this. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is why you would want to convert your corners into a satin. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole video talking about the difference between satin and strokes. So you can watch that if you want. Yeah. More information. So hit apply and quit here. What's next, Megan? Um, the next stitch we're going to talk about is e-stitches. So this stitch is mostly used for applique, um, when you're like making a hat or a shirt, and it kind of is what its name stands for. It stitches out in like an e-shape, and we'll show you how to make that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, again, just do a simple line to show that e-stitch. And just like that. And we need to convert this to a satin in order for that e-stitch to be able to work. So we're going to go back here and convert this to a satin. And you can see pretty simple. That's what it's going to look like. And now that it's a satin, we're just going to select it and we're going to change this to an e-stitch e in params. And to do that, we just click the button. So you don't see much different here, but again, you can change the spacing and you can see quite the difference here. So you see this a lot, as Megan said, on applique projects like jerseys, you know, sewing on numbers or names to the back of a jersey or something to a hat um, to get different kind of results. You can just adjust, make some adjustments and have the, the look you're, you're going for. So we'll leave it just like that for now. Fine, quit. The last stitch type we'll talk about is a fill stitch. And this is a very commonly used one. It's basically, if you make any shape or any circle, when you press the color fill option, that's a fill stitch. Right, so we'll use the rectangle here as an example. And you can see right now, this has a very thick stroke, but I'm going to take the stroke away by hitting shift and no color. And then I'm going to hit red as my fill. And right now this is just a fill stitch and we can see what it looks like when we go to params, how this is different uh, than the rest. You can also make kind of a fill um, pattern with satin stitches, but that would be a very much smaller um, space. And these fill stitches are good for large spaces you're filling. And the uses are pretty obvious when like you're making a design, that's kind of what it's used for. Yeah, it has that nice pattern fill area. And again, you can make this any shape that you want. Mm -hmm. And you can customize a fill stitch in many, many ways that- Yeah, we've talked about yeah. already. All right, so we hit apply and quit. And that's it. So now we'll sew these out and see how they turn up.
right, so here are our results. Uh, we probably could have hooped this a little bit better. We got some pulling here, but again, that's because we didn't really hoop it that well and we kind of pulled in the material from this side right here. But anyway, here are the results. So you can see here is just a simple running stitch that can lock material down. And then you can see here the bean stitch, What you can see here is like a double layer and again, can give some pretty good detail. And then here is our special um, manual stitch where we stitched a really long path. And again, you probably don't want to do it this long because it's susceptible to being pulled out pretty easily, but we just kind of wanted to show that process. And you can see here, we got one stitch point, another stitch point, another stitch point, and another stitch point. And everything else is just laying on top. And then here's our zigzag stitch which again is just a stroke. And here is basically the same thing, but with a corner to kind of show that this edge here doesn't turn out too well compared to a satin column, which kind of adjusts around this corner. And you can really tell with this shine um, when you get some, when you get certain light on it, it really is a nice finish there. And then our E stitch right here, and then followed by our fill stitch. And those are the different kinds of stitches you can get pretty simply and easily with ink stitch. So those are all the stitches you guys can utilize within ink stitch and they each have their like own pros and cons but it kind of just depends on what works best for your design. Yeah it's about adding some variety and ability to do different kinds of things in your own projects. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.